Kanye West is now joining a huge white supremacy platform of parlor. Let's get into the negotiation. Welcome to the revolution. Kanye West to buy controversial, according to Bloomberg. I like this title, controversial social networking app. It's controversial because, I don't know, freedom of speech reigns there, and so therefore it's controversial. Because how dare you allow 13-year-old boys to go on and say the things they've been harboring deep down inside purely for shock value. We need to silence those people. Or just people with dissenting opinions or wrong think. We need to get rid of those people at all possible. Because we need to keep everyone in a bubble and keep everyone safe. Because it's more important to be safe and have right think than, you know, have different ideas. Or if you're actually a racist, allow the racist to be racist. So we know, oh crap. I don't like that person because they're a freaking racist. Not because they told me not to take the vaccine. Like It's just like, let's just get, let's dial it back. <laughs> let's everyone just relax. Is Parler this white supremacy platform? No, but it's a, it's a platform. I'm on Parler. I never use it. It's a backup platform, just like all these other platforms like Getter, even True Social to an extent. It's like these same people that are celebrating, uh, you know, Kanye buying parlor are the same people that are still using Twitter as they pretend like Twitter just totally sucks and that they still use it because it's a main source and what everyone's on as Elon calls it the town square. Um, is this a huge move? Is this contra is this coincidental in any capacity because of his new founded friendship with Candace Owens's husband, who is a CEO of parlor? I probably, but at the same time, we're not totally sure, but the coincidence is too high when he could have just created a, uh, you know, his own username and stuff like this on any of these other platforms. He decides to buy this platform and make it great again. I don't know. Was it ever great? Was Parler ever a solution? Was Parler ever an answer to anything? Does anyone actually use Parler uh, besides using it as a backup? I like all these far leftists that are calling it a white supremacy. They, these people that are calling Parler a white supremacy platform or all these other stupid things, instead of just seeing it as a freedom of speech platform, they don't actually use it. They've never been on it. They've never created a platform on it. They just call it. It's the same thing as they see Donald Trump and they call him a Nazi. Like these people have no capacity for nuance or reasons why things, and they just call them things and they put people in boxes. It's the same thing as you see a lot of, conservatives celebrating this right now or people on the right celebrating this like you know elon potentially owning twitter and then we have donald trump owning true social and parlor is now owned by uh kanye as a as if kanye and elon are conservative all of a sudden like i just <laughs> we're we're so obsessed with our tribes and putting people in little boxes to make ourselves feel better uh so that we can just say oh, okay this is the same people, same people with me. I'm like, if I make fun of somebody on the right, they'll call me a far leftist as opposed to actually, uh, understanding what I'm talking about or what I'm thinking. Um, is this a great move for Kanye? Pro I don't see it. I don't know. I just, there are so many of these platforms that I think that I'll eventually die or just be half decent. And I like, you know, 10,000 people were used or something like that, but they'll never compete with the YouTube, the Twitter, the Instagram, uh, TikTok is actually a viable platform, but like these platforms are so big because the average individual isn't going to be on Parler, Getter, True Social, Twitter, Instagram. It's too much. And so you choose one, you choose whoever you enjoy the most and you follow them on that platform. And then, and there's that. But is, uh, uh, People are freaking out about Kanye right now. As it, I remember a day, a time in my life where my artists or people that created art and stuff like that were the most controversial people in the world. But now there's like a new push to put them in a box and make sure they're safe and in the bubble and have right think and uh, follow what the authority says of the day because the, that's the only way uh, I like my artists. And we wonder why our new art is crap in comparison to the older art when it was a little bit 
crazier and more controversial and stuff like that. So, yay, owning Parler. Are you going to use Parler now? <laughs> I'm not. I don't care. I'm not going to look up his tweets because I don't care enough. And I, 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 But are you mad about this? Is this going to ruin your day? If so, I worry about you. Have a great day. As always, make sure to follow me on Parler. <laughs> Uh, God, help us all. We're going through weird growing pains at the moment, and uh, I'm going to cut this video. I'm so sick of the who cares about so many of these things, but I'm supposed to care because um, it's the new world we live in, and we need to be uh, up in arms and uh, freak out. And lose our minds over the littlest things like Kanye West uh, buying Parler, you know. And that's a, that's a huge no-no. Don't do that. There's white supremacists on there, you know. There's 13-year-old boys. Uh, there's bots. There's people that just get on there and just say the most controversial thing they could possibly think of. And that is triggering. And we don't like that, okay. And that needs to stop. Have a great day. <laughs> God.